beautiful Gemini friends and welcome to your horoscope for December of 2020 which this is our last monthly horoscope for the year so that's a little bit wild to me but I'm so grateful that you're here if this is your first time joining us welcome 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 if we've been together all year long this is like a big deal to close out our year together so I look forward to walking you through December which is quite busy by the way not to mention the fact that we have got another eclipse that will be happening in your seventh house so very much so the heat of relationships things about relationships in your life and this is the second one that's happened here this year it's the last one of the year but we've also got major long-term planets that are moving and that's going to be the setup for 2021. So hopefully you've listened to your 2021 forecast as well, but we'll walk into position as the energies get moving this month. Now, before we jump in and talk about what's going on, the Eat and Greets will continue on this month. Patricia Walsh will be here. Sally Ducharme will be here. Michael Bartlett. Uh, Peter Burns will be here talking about astrology and palm reading. How cool is that? Victor Oliver will be here. We're doing um, draconic astrology. So if you have any interest in draconic astrology or you've never seen it work, Work. It is so awesome. So you're gonna make sure you want you want to make sure you're here for that as well. Ali Gully will be here. Linda Bird, if you've seen her with Astrology Hub or any of her work, she will be here as well. Kira Sutherland. So it's gonna be a busy, good month in the Eat and Greets. And remember, you can always watch the Eat and Greets ad free with me over at Patreon. All of that is in the description box down below. All right, Gemini, let's get in here and talk about what's going on. So right at the beginning of the month on the 1st, we've got Mercury, who is your ruling planet of communication, decision-making, full power being your ruling planet. It's actually going to move into the energy of Sagittarius, so just right across the street from you. So this, we know, lights up the conversation, brings busyness to relationships, the topics and ideas of relationships. Now, in very Sagittarian form, I actually love this for you because this is very confident. This is a very optimistic, very self-confident kind of energy. Now, Sag is not big on the details, which Mercury is. So in relationships, as Mercury comes in here, he's going to be looking at a little bit of a bigger plan. And why I love this for you is as you watch, as the month goes on, we're going to see these planets come around and get to the top portion or the day portion of the chart. So this is an indicator for me that here in December, as those planets make that move, especially Venus, especially Mercury getting above that horizon line, something that's happening is in your relationships, you are prepared to be a bit more social, have a bigger picture of things, but it's all also the place where you're not having to be so conservative and be so grounded down in the um, in the home zone or the ideas or what everybody else thinks now you're taking this and actually getting a lot of emotional as well as material fulfillment in the work in the outside world and I love that for you because this brings those good kind of relationships with you you could be connected to someone who's foreign from you or someone who is more of a guru or you're teaching together with them something like that but mercury is going to bring a busyness and a conversation to this relationship zone for you now on the 14th we're going to have this new moon solar eclipse at 23 degrees of Sagittarius so the seventh house is lit it is lit. It is on fire. There is some stuff going on in your relationship zone. And when I say relationship, I mean conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships. This includes um, lovers, business partners, open enemies. That means people you know about. Legal situations can also fall into this energy, especially because Sagittarius is uh, very much that Jupiter ruled energy. So in this energy, as this new moon is happening, this is still the new moon for the month. Plant your seeds of intention. What do you want to begin here in your relationships? What would you like to shift in your relationships? What kind of relationships would you like to call in? If you're in relationships or you've been evaluating your relationships as the year comes to a close, which are the right ones to stay and to go? Because you know, when you ask the universe for help and to take you forward, you have to stop being surprised when people don't, that can't go with you start falling out and we have to have the courage to let that go as well so what would you like to begin because we're going to watch this play out over the next six months okay and eclipse brings us six months worth of living and it's a nice emotional reset so we get some clarity so we can begin the magic of that new moon here now on the 15th we've got chiron coming out of retrograde in the energy of aries so this is in your 11th house space now chiron is our wounded healer but also i teach him as one of our greatest teachers this is a wound or this is um a pain that you've had and you know it so well that because you've hurt that way you can actually help other people heal 
from their own hurt that is the same wound. Now, in the energy of Aries, we've all been digging into this identity wound. What is my identity? Where do I align? Um, what are the principles that guide who I am in my identity? We have all been working on that. And as Chiron has been retrograde, we've been going over years and years of what we've believed around our own identities. And I think about this energy of social, the social dilemma, that um, video on Netflix, if you haven't had a chance to see it, maybe check it out. Because it's this idea that are you living out of your own identity or are you living out of what's actually been given to you? So we have all been in that evaluation. Now here in your 11th house, this again, gives me this vibe and this energy that around your social groupings, friends, long range goals, where we you want us to know you, where you want to have some public social accolades about who you are. The reformation of your identity has been absolutely critical in this area. So now that Chiron is direct, you got to go out and like be the person who's in alignment with your ideals for who your identity is. And it really has a lot of forward motion here. And this is a place where we live quite deeply because we live from the place that's been wounded and we use it to come out and teach and share ourselves. So that'll be a beautiful energy for you to carry forward. Now, I also want to say that on the 15th, we've got Venus moving into the energy of Sagittarius. So the seventh house has been quite, quite busy. And as Venus comes above that horizon line, she also works as a magnetizer to the seventh house area. So bring some harmony, bring some good things, have some, have some dinner, have some food, have some something with the relationships in your life. Make those business deals and negotiations, sign those contracts. Venus is bringing the benefit to this area. She's working with Sagittarius, which is a natural Jupiter ruled energy. They're both the benefic energies. But what I will tell you as well is just be sure, Gemini, I know you're good at it, but just be sure that whatever contracts you're going to sign, whatever deals you're going to make, you know all of the fine print and that is just kind of standard fare when we're talking about, you know, investing or investigating opportunities or relationships that are coming to us. The other thing that I'm thinking about is on the 13th, Mercury, your ruling planet is actually going to step out of bounds. Okay, so Mercury is up there in the energy of Sagittarius. So in that seventh house, but you're stepping out of bounds. That planet is thinking out of bounds, which means maybe you're going to connect with people or you're going to connect and bring social relationships into your life by looking outside of your normal social spheres, right? Maybe you have challenges in your relationships. You're going to find those answers outside, out of bounds of your normal social spheres. So on the 13th too, if you find yourself feeling like you're in high flying, super communicative mode as a person who has a mercury out of bounds I can tell you this is the other reason I say look at the details of what you're dealing with whether it's people places or things get to the details because sometimes mercury out of bounds is like on speed and it's going really fast and you can miss things that will be critical for you later now the other thing I can tell you about Venus the eclipse mercury all being here in the seventh house is in this next six months if you have relationships that just can't fill the bill they just are not healthy enough to stay they will begin to fall out and this really gives them that push and that shake out okay on the 17th we've got Saturn entering into the energy of Aquarius so now you know Saturn has been in Capricorn working on this eighth house space for you for a few years and it's done you've crystallized you found some independence you found some vulnerability you've uh, handled some traumas right you've gone into the deepest passion and desires that you have for your own life and have crystallized those things now Saturn stepping into the energy of Aquarius is going to move up for this next couple of years and work this ninth house area for you. This is publishing, marketing, broadcasting, getting yourself out there, educational opportunities, training, certification, travel, different languages, uh, ethics, morals, law. They all fall in there because they take you above your horizon. So as Saturn comes here, the first place I want to take you is let's go back between March and July. What happened for you when Saturn took that first little dip into the energy of Aquarius? Besides a pandemic that doesn't count but what happened what did you see come alive become electric in your life of course technology got very big but did you find a space for yourself in this where you're like I think I want to travel I think I want to get out here I want to share my voice for the people I want to study something I want to get into the sciences right what happened for you between March and July because that was your sneak peek 
of what you're prepared to work on now for this next two years. So as Saturn comes into the energy of Aquarius, which it does rule as well, especially if you consider traditional rulership, you get both Uranus and Saturn in modern rulership. So Saturn is quite comfortable here, but he doesn't work as grounded as he does in Capricorn. Instead, he says, the sky's the limit. Let's go see what else is up and out there. And that's you. You're up. You're out there. Maybe your educational plans will shift here because as Saturn gets in here, if it doesn't fit and it's not working out, if that teaching gig is not working out, Saturn is going to say, nope, we need to take that off the table. But if it's time for you to be stepping out, Saturn also brings rewards. If you've been working hard, putting the pieces in place, getting yourself ready, Saturn shows up with rewards. I'm going to tell you, as a Taurus, I had Saturn for the last couple of years in my ninth house space, and it has been a public explosion, and I have loved every minute of it. So think along those lines, okay? When we get to the 18th, we've got, excuse me, the 19th, we've got Jupiter now entering into the energy of Aquarius. Now, they're not tight into their conjunction yet. We'll see that in just a couple days. But Jupiter does come into Aquarius. Now, Jupiter in Aquarius is, of course, also in that ninth house space. So we know that the ninth house for 2021, 2022 is going to be prominent. There's going to be a lot of work here. This is where we're going to crystallize these areas and expand them. Jupiter is much stronger in the energy of Aquarius than he is in Capricorn. So as he's here, he's going to bring the wisdom of expansion to this ninth house area for you. He's going to ask you to share your wisdom with people around you. He's going to ask you to take what you know and add it to the whole of people. It's an absolutely beautiful energy, and we really haven't seen Jupiter play like this since 2009. And now he, throughout 2021, he is going to be in Aquarius, take a dip into um, Pisces, but then he'll go back into Aquarius until we finish out the year. So you can see Jupiter as your travel and tour guider in this ninth house area through um, 2021. On the 20th, we see uh, Mercury now moving from that energy of Capricorn and continuing that travel into Capricorn. So Mercury is going to busy up this 8th house area for you. You've already done the work here. You've done so much crystallizing here. Saturn is out of there. Jupiter's out of there. Pluto's still playing over there. But these guys have moved on. So you have a bit of a deep breath, which also means for you, Gemini, in this 8th house area, joint finances, um, whether that be with people, places, or things, that loan, the collaboration, sexual trauma and healing, sexual trauma or sexual opening, right? Maybe this is time where you're like, I am ready to have that baby or I'm ready to deal with the reproductive things. I'm going to get into my root chakra, studying your astrology, your herbalism, the occult things, whatever it is in this area. Mercury and Capricorn is going to make sure that you are organized and efficient and effective so that you can be productive here and achieve. And mentally, you're solid. This is your ruling planet working in a solid place, which allows you to put your attention to details, your need for knowing all the stuff, knowing all the tea, knowing all the information into a good productive form so that you can achieve here. Now, this is also great if we're considering... Um, you know, maybe this is something great for your, your partner. Maybe your partner's taking on a new contract or there's conversation or their business is getting quite busy and that's generating income or benefit for you as well. Because in the eighth house, it's like you can have the benefit, but you didn't necessarily earn it. So this is a really a nice omen, I think, here. Um, it also... I think it's very good for in this area of your life to ask you flat out, Gemini, where are you spending too much time just thinking about what you'd like to have happen as opposed to taking action on what you'd like to see happening? You have to look at what you're doing and is what you're doing productively getting you where you would like to be experiencing things? That's a great question there. Now on the 21st, we've got a busy day. The sun enters into the energy of Capricorn, so we'll say happy birthdays to the Capricorns. This again is going to light up this eighth house space. So we know that it's busy. We're going to be productive, get organized, get kind of serious serious over this next four weeks. Now the sun into Capricorn means that we are welcoming in a solstice. So up here in the U.S. we're going to have winter and our Aussie friends are going to have summer. So whichever solstice you are experiencing, happy season change. This productive, serious, grounded cardinal energy is starting us off in a new season, a new breath. The planets are moving forward this month. So we really have a new season on our hands to take a lot of advantage of and start off strong as we move into our new zodiac 
zodiacal year once we get to March, okay? Now, also on the 21st, we've got Saturn and Jupiter coming together. Finally, we've been talking about it all year long, and they are finally together for their conjunction here in the energy of Aquarius. Now, every 20 years, they get together, and this is a reformation. This is a beginning of a new age for you in your life. It's a big deal, of course, for humanity. We move away from the emphasis of Earth, the Industrial Revolution, that heavy grounded material energy to the space of ideas. Because this lights up your eighth house space, to me again, it puts this big pressure or this big emphasis on everything that you have been, excuse me, it lights up your ninth house space, everything that you have been learning and getting grounded and getting your own independence and your desires around so that you can take the ideas out and share them right? Air travels. You're an air energy. You know that. This is friendly to you. It's sister companion energy. Take those ideas out because 2021 and going forward is not so much about everything that you have. It's what can you give and what do you have to teach, right? Not so much the material, more into the ideas of the ideas, the sciences, medicine. Where can we advance each other by sharing information? So I am thrilled and I would love if you're of course over the age of like 30 what what did your life look like 20 years ago what was happening for you because every 20 years we can see this coming around so what was shifting for you at that time and you can have a similar experience with this Jupiter Saturn conjunction now, as we close out this month on the 30th, maybe the 29th, depending on where you live, we have got a full moon, just a regular full moon in the energy of cancer. So just next door. So this is going to light up your second house space, the house of money for you. Okay. Now the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged or adjusted. Something has run its course. It's time to either adjust it or end it or acknowledge that it's, it's just done. But in the energy of cancer, one of the things that I think of is the family, of course, and this is a moon. So it comes to the family. Family. But it's also the energy. The moon is the energy of the people. So I would ask you in regards to the people in your life and your world, do you still have financial connections going on that need to be adjusted? Oh, well, you're a Gemini too. So siblings, do you have things going on with your siblings that there is maybe some kind of financial connection or the family and then there's siblings and a financial connection or something like that in December that you're getting ready to transition out? Whatever it is, though, um, at the level of home and where you are nurtured and where you are nourished. This particular moon is saying, are you nourished? Are you ready to begin cardinal energy cancer to be nourished in your budget, in your money, in your self-esteem, in, in your values? And for some of you, it may be that you're like, yes, I am ready to travel. I am ready to go someplace else. I'm ready to have a new experience. So you're literally getting rid of your possessions because you're like, I don't want to take it with me. I want a different experience going forward. So whatever it looks like for you, remember cancer is asking, are you nourished in the area of your values? You've just reset your identity as well, um, Gemini. So do you feel nourished in how you're presenting yourself and the values that you're living by? I look forward to seeing what's going to happen for you this month. If you are that gem who's got something going on with the family and siblings, can you let me know in the comment section down below? Because I would love to know what that connection is. I just see it's it's a little it's a little bit busy. Like the siblings maybe have like, it's like their car breaks down or something, and they're getting money though from the parents, and then somehow you are involved in that. It's it's that's what the dynamic kind of looks like. So if you can let me know, I would absolutely love it. All right, Gemini, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'm sending you all my love this month and, and going forward. And I look forward to seeing you, of course, in the weeklies until we close out 2020. But I will see you on the other side in 2021. Bye, Geminis.